In this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about monitor calibration, in particular, why we calibrate our monitors, is it really necessary for us to calibrate our monitors, and what's the best way and easiest way of doing it. So, as many of you will know, Hannah and I have recently returned from a trip round the north of Scotland. We've been travelling round Skye, we also went to the Outer Hebrides, we went to Harris, and then we also explored the far northwest as well. And we've come back from that trip with an awful lot of images that we're hoping to print. Um, and actually, this is something which we've done a little, little bit of printing in the past. Um, we printed a few of our images, but it's certainly something which I want to be doing an awful lot more of. And as part of our drive to print more images, one of the most important things that we decided that we should really be thinking about doing is calibrating our monitors. So why do we calibrate our monitor? Well, the first reason really is that when you buy a monitor, it normally comes with an inbuilt set color profile. Now, in my case, I use an iMac. It's a, a 2017 27-inch 5K Retina display. And iMacs in particular are very well known for having quite a blue colour cast to them. And the reason Apple do this is because when you walk into an Apple shop and you're looking at their beautiful screens, their wonderful screensavers which they put up on them, that blue aesthetic just looks nicer. It grabs the attention and it makes them look quite classy. However, when it comes to editing photos, what you find that you're doing is if you've got that inbuilt blue colour cast to your monitor, you end up compensating for that when you're trying to make your image look good in Photoshop. And often that will result in, for example, a, a warmer image. The other thing you need to be aware of are lighting conditions and how bright your monitor is, because if your monitor brightness is set too high, you'll end up overcompensating for that. And actually, when you after you've edited an image, if you ever print it out or view it on a different monitor that's been set up differently, that image will often end up coming out a little bit dark. So one way to combat that is to calibrate your monitors. Now there are some inexpensive online websites you can go to where you try you can try to calibrate your monitor. You can also sometimes find inbuilt software, but usually it doesn't do a very good job. Often it, it it doesn't measure your ambient light or take into account the ambient light, and it also doesn't always um, take into consideration the age of your monitor. So for that reason, one of the best ways of calibrating your monitor is to use a tool such as this. This is the Data Color uh, Spider X, and these calibration tools they will hang over your monitor and sit on your monitor and then the software which comes with these, which you normally download from the internet, will run a series of colour plates that just flash up on your screen and the tool will then use those colour plates to set the colour profile for your monitor. Data Colour were actually kind enough to send us this unit to try out and normally um, when companies approach us and ask us to try equipment um, to be honest, we, we don't normally take them up on the offer, but in this particular case, uh, because we're planning on printing an awful lot more of our images, um, we were keen actually to give us a try. What we found actually in the case of the Spider X is it does do things a lot quicker. It's very convenient to use. In fact, it's a lot easier to use than some of the other monitor calibrators that we've used in the past. So do you really need to calibrate your monitor? Well, these tools can seem quite expensive, especially if you're first starting out in photography. The data color is currently retailing for £159, um, and that can seem like a little bit of an investment, but actually £159 isn't a huge investment when it comes to printing your images. If you start printing out images and finding that uh, you're getting wrong results, that they're, they're all coming out bad, then you end up having to reprint those images and printing in itself is an expensive practice. So actually by investing um, in a calibration tool such as the data color you can actually save yourself money in the long term and it gives you that confidence that you're starting from a good point with editing your photos where you know that you're not going to be uh, producing images which are way too dark or way too warm or way too blue. Um, it just gives you that extra added confidence when you start printing. But if you're first starting out in photography, it might not seem important and for sure you can edit your photos and look at them on different monitors and see what they, what they look like. You'll often find that an image will look very different on your monitor screen to how it looks on a phone or it will look different if you view it on a different monitor. 
Um, that often isn't too much of a problem, but certainly if you're thinking of taking your photography to the next level, you might want to consider uh, purchasing a calibration tool just to make sure that you're getting those settings right when you're post-processing. But finally, certainly if you are considering printing your images regularly, and I really highly recommend that you do start printing because certainly since Hannah and I have started printing and we've printed a few of our images, we've also printed a, a book recently, it's such a joy to actually get a hard copy of one of your images. And they, it, it really is so much better, I think, looking at a printed version of your images to just looking at it on an electronic screen all the time. So if you are thinking of getting into printing, I highly recommend that you purchase one of these calibration tools and start calibrating your monitor. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, I'm trying, going to try and do um, keep these sort of product videos to be uploaded on a separate day to our normal cut type of vlogs. I know not everyone is interested in these. Most of you probably want to see me out taking photographs, or I think most of you probably really want to see Hannah out taking photographs. So as a general rule, if I upload a video midweek, it will generally be a more desk-based or product-orientated video, and we'll stick our week, we'll keep our weekend uploads to our actual in the field videos. Hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. I'll leave a link in the description below if you are interested in purchasing a Spider-X from Datacolor and we'll see you next time.